If you have never used a bearing timing chip before, or if you've never made an engine before, this video will not make much sense to you as I skip on how to do these things. I recommend you go watch my first video, Basic Engine Building. Hello GModders. Someone asked me to do a radial engine timing tutorial. And that's an interesting subject. There's not that many tutorials out there for that subject. So I'm going to do one. Now I have a radial engine set up here. And how I get these thrusters to be so nice and rubbery. I take a prop and I point it so it's straight up and down. And then I put the thruster on it. I freeze it. I remove the weld. And then I rotate it 72 degrees. Why 72 degrees? Because the full circle is 360 degrees and 360 degrees divided by 5 is 72. So I rotated it by 72, added the next thruster on the end, rotated it by 72, so on and so forth until I got to this point. You say don't the thrusters disappear? No. If you use advanced duplicator 2, you go like this, then you paste without constraints, and then you delete the prop. Bam, they stay. Amazing. Now, I have a pre-made engine here with all the wire stuff. Nice big speaker on the back. We are going to add the ropes. I want my engine to rotate to the right, clockwise. So we're going to do the first piston from here. Here. I'm gonna fade this. And then we're gonna take out our precision tool, rotate 72 degrees to the right, because you want it to turn to the right. Go from the second piston to the same. Oh, I want that to be green. From the second piston to the same point as the first. And we continue doing this. Rotate 72 degrees to the right. Go from the third piston. Same point as the other two. And you keep doing this. Until you have this. Now it should turn all nice and lovely. And to demonstrate that, I have a couple things to show. Here is a debugger it's in the top left. It's going to show us all the information about our engine. Mainly, look, turns like a radial engine should because all the points are connected at one point on the crank. And we got our RPM there, but the most important thing of all, the most important thing, is that if you look at B, B is zero and it increases as the engine turns to the right. Very important. If it increases as the engine turns to the left, this tutorial is going to be crap for you. Or just do the opposite of what I'm doing. Why are, you know, rope your engine differently. Rope it to the left, but you're going to have to figure out your own bearings. Anyway, actually the bearings should still work if you're... Anyway, going on with the thing, um, the chip gives the bearing from 180 to negative 180, but I have B as 0 to 360 because I find it easier to time on, and I'll explain that. Alright, I'll just ignore this. Uh, it, should, it should be happy now. Now what is this? TH is throttle times on. In my older chips, I was doing throttle times on every line, and that kind of sucked. RPM is the raw RPM output rounded. Uh, RPM R is RPM raw. It's what it, it'll, it'll give you a bunch of decimal places. SP is sound pitch. You can change that to get a different sound pitch. Um, on is obviously like when you're sitting in a seat or something. Now, for our bearings, the first piston is 0 to 180 because it goes for half a circle. I also got to mention something real quick. The way I have my piston set up, when I give it a positive input, it tries to push. Okay, so that's important. 
So the first one is 0 to 180. The second one is 72. Why is 72? Because we know the second piston is 72 apart to 252. Why 252? Because 180 plus 72 is 252. Next one is 144 to 324. Next one is 216 to 396. And the next one is 288 to 4, what, 68. And those are our timings for when we want the pistons to pull. So the first few are easy, and we'll deal with those. So if B is greater than 0, and we want the and sign, B is less than 180, T1, our thruster 1, uh, you can call it P1 if you want, but I, I do T1, just to add a habit, equals negative TH. Why negative? Because we need that first piston to pull. All right? And a, and a positive input will make it push, but it's already, it's already way down where it shouldn't be pushing, so it's going to pull. And we need to put a clause in there for the pushing, so else T... 1 equals th. The next one, if b is greater than 72 and b is less than 252, t2 equals negative th. Also, there's probably some super math way to do this with, like, super clauses or one single line of trigonometry, but I don't know trigonometry. I'm a simple person with simple math skills. I'm doing it in a simple way. All right, the next one, if B is greater than 144 and less than, oh, and B is less than 324, oop, going all over the place here. T3 equals negative TH. Else T3 equals TH. What about these guys here? Well, crap. We, we can't go over 360. We don't have an input over 360. Yep, I understand that. So what you do as you do these numbers, minus 360, you're left with 36. And what would that be? 108? And you're thinking, well, if I have to go 216 to 36, I'm going to have to do if B is greater than 216 and less than 360, and if B is greater than 0 and less than 36. That's how I used to think. But recently, I've realized that you can switch these around. It'll make sense in a second. If you go if B is greater than 36 and B is less than 216, T4, now you switch this around too, equals TH else T4 equals negative TH. Bam. You, if you switch these around, you switch the other one around. So this one, if B is greater than 108 and B is less than 288, T5 equals TH, else T5 equals negative TH. I know that was a lot of writing, but this would have been much, much longer had I been younger. So bam, I have all the pistons wired up except for T1. Should work. If it doesn't, I will look a fool. There we go.
know that it doesn't sound very balanced. It's because there's no countering whatsoever, uh, countering all of that weight on the crankshaft right there. But you can uh, you can alleviate that with a counterweight or counter thruster. But that is the engine. See how high we can jack it up. Looks like for this this engine that I just made, about 500 reliably. Around there. Now, now you might think this engine's a little bit rough, and it is. Uh, I could have made it much better with precision alignment, but I didn't want to use a tool that a lot of people wouldn't know. But if you're wondering, that is how you time. A radial engine and I hope it made sense I hope some of you learned something uh, I hope some of you learned something about E2 because I used to write my engines a lot differently it's a lot more simple now and remember the trick about subtracting the difference and switching the numbers it it really helped and you can use it on any engine make sure E2 is a lot shorter uh, have a good one As a side note, if you no grab your pistons, an engine like this will alert, work a lot better. It'll work at all rev ranges and everything. Um, I don't like to no grab pistons. I, I like I don't like to no grab anything on my creations. So yeah, if you if you want it to work nice and nice and slow and happy and smooth like that, try no grabbing your pistons. Lastly, I just wanted to include a a slow motion shot of all the thrusters working so that. If someone still doesn't get it, they can understand when the thrusters are pushing and when they are pulling. So look at the direction of the forces.